So when was the last time there was a Newport Richie specific uh... meetup? Oh wow! Wow, how long ago <laughs> was that? Uh, hang on a second. Let me check the website. I'll tell you from there. That's one of the nice things is, yeah, if you go to the website, um, yeah, la la la, wptampabay.org, and then click on the oh, where did my browser go. If you click on the list of the meetups, if you click on Newport Richie specifically, you'll see past meetups. We're using the uh, uh, event calendar aggregator to pull all those in. I can give you a direct link if you need it. Looks like your last event was February 22nd of 2019 or 18? 18. February 22nd, oh, 2018. Really? Yeah, it's been a long time. Oh, I thought it was February 22nd of 2020. <laughs> no. Now, that's the only bad thing about the, the event calendar short codes is they don't show the year on there. But, you know, typically that wouldn't be a bad thing, but the year in this case is kind of yeah. long. Yeah. Here, I'll give you guys a link to that page too. I'll drop it in the chat. There you go. Yeah, it has been a while. I don't even know. Is, is Imagine and Vent Create still there? I don't know. I do not know. I mean, I would, yeah. right now, it's probably not doing much. Good. Yeah, I would imagine not. Yeah, because they were a makerspace. So I don't know what they're like. The one in Lakeland has been doing pretty good, but they've got you know, everyone must wear masks all the time. They're in the building. And of course, that limits how long a lot of people will stay in the building all day. Uh, and that's one of their uh, spaces like that, co-working space with uh, uh, maker space and a kitchen and everything else. So there's Travis. Howdy, Travis. <laughs> well, <laughs> this, may, this may be all you get today, Daniel. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for coming. Um, I'm Daniel Schutzsmith. Uh, I met uh, Travis and Jim at uh, what was it? WordCamp Miami. Uh -huh. uh, the there. last WordCamp. The yeah. very last WordCamp. First, yeah. first WordCamp. <laughs> uh, and I was actually one of the organizers for that, um, and uh, talked to them that there, and said, you know, I was interested in doing more meetups over here and attending, and I mentioned that. You know, Newport Richie meetup hasn't started for a while, so we should start it back up. <laughs> and so here we are. <laughs> um, yep. I thought we'd start off by just like going around, introducing ourselves a little bit. Um, you know, what, what kind of work we do with WordPress, uh, what we're looking to do, things like that. Uh, well, and just, you know, any other ideas you have for things you want to hear about and things you're interested in about WordPress. Um, for me, I just a quick brief on what I do. So uh, I work for Pinellas County government. Uh, I'm in charge of all our websites there. Uh, we actually created the COVID-19 dashboard and things like that just a little while ago. So I keep seeing those numbers, Rob, like every day <laughs> and, and wondering what, what's, what's correct, what's not. But, um, but we're trying our best to kind of put the, the right stuff out there. Uh, the things that I've been doing there is really trying to convert a lot of our sites over to WordPress. Uh, if you look at Pinellas County uh, dot org, you'll notice that it's mostly static HTML. <laughs> and so we're actually converting that all uh, into WordPress eventually here. Um, but I'm really active in the community. I'm also actually uh, one of the organizers for WordCamp US as well. Uh, and that's going to be virtual this year completely. So everyone can be able to attend no matter where they are. Um, so I'm just really excited to be here. I'm excited to, to get this going. And I definitely want, you know, people to get involved with me and help organize more of these types of types of meetings for Newport Richie. So using multi-site then uh, for the Pinellas County one? Not yet, but we probably are gonna. Yeah, we're probably gonna. Um, we're looking into to something. It's got, it's got, you know, using multi-site has its advantages and disadvantages. The biggest disadvantage is that if one of our, one of our microsites is on there and gets more traffic than everything else, then it really bogs down the server a bit. So. There's little things we'll look at. 
I'd say go with the rest of the Newport Ritchie folks first. Yeah, Andy, you want to go? Sure. Um, I, I'm a part-time resident there. Uh, Jim, Travis, and Elaine have, have uh, seen me before in some of the other uh, virtual meetups. Um, so I'm about six months. I spend usually from middle December to the end of May in, uh, at Sunnybrook in Newport Ritchie. I've uh, been going down there for about eight years now. The other half of time, the little bald ass prairies, 250 miles north of Montana. <laughs> so, uh, you, uh, Daniel, regarding the word camp, I've never been to one. Uh, do you have a date for that yet? Mm, it is, I believe, 27th through the 29th of October. Oh, good. Okay. The, uh, um, the type of stuff, I, I mean, I, I have some smaller clients, um, as, as some of you know, one of the ones I was working was, was on a security issue. We think we have most of it uh, nailed down now. Uh, after our discussion last time, we'll see what happens um, if they get attacked any further. Ooh, what kind of an attack was it, like malware or DDoS? Yeah, well... Uh, we're not a hundred percent sure what part of the problem was that they, they, we think we know who it is. We're not going to be able to stop them from attempting. Um, it's definitely malicious. They, they got in, they sent out a number of, uh, emails as if they were uh, the client to some of his contacts. Um, so we've done a, a number of steps and, and nothing's occurred so far. We'll see what happens. If and, you, if uh, you don't mind me asking, what, uh, what industry is that client in? I'm curious. Um, do I put this carefully? Maybe I shouldn't. Yeah. Okay. Good answer. Yeah. 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 yeah he, Maybe I shouldn't, because it would identify. You'd probably immediately identify the source of the uh, the attack. Uh, Rob, you want to go next? Uh, sure. Uh, I actually <clears throat> snuck in. I actually live up in Hudson, uh, cool. but this is the closest thing to me. I was. I went to uh, one of the St. Pete uh, meetups and set in on one of their, their meetings. So when I saw this, this was awesome because it's a lot closer to home. Um, I've only been in uh, web design for a couple of years. Uh, I've been in IT communications all my life. Uh, just wanted to get something that was uh, uh, a little less work on the back and uh, knees. Um, so, cause I'm a disabled vet. So that was starting to wear on me. So I've learned a lot. I, I started learning uh, HTML and CSS I uh, jumped on a quicker route and went with WordPress. So uh, I like WordPress. I use Elementor page builder. Uh, oh. So I like that. Um, but I'm still working on the, the HTML and CSS because you know, I want to learn the in-depth stuff. So I'm trying to get in on, on more of this stuff here because uh, trying to learn more of the, uh, the business side, you know, uh, getting clients, uh, keeping clients, uh, how to work with clients things like that. And then my wife uh, is actually taking classes for marketing and SEO. So she handles a lot of that stuff for me. Uh, but she also works a full time job too. So we're, we're always busy. That's cool. I was uh, my wife and I were a team like that as well for uh, about seven years Had a studio together. WordPress clients primarily. Um, it was great. We actually liked working with each other, which a lot of people were surprised at. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a good time. That's cool. Um, how do you like Elementor? Uh, I mean, I love it. It's really what what I got started with. I really haven't tried a whole lot of other stuff. I've tinkered with uh, the Gutenberg, uh, you know, since they brought it out. Um, yeah. I, not as easy to work with, but I really like Elementor. I, I feel it's very easy to use. Uh, there's a lot of training. Uh, information out there, uh, a lot of plugins match well with it, so I like it a lot. Yeah, I feel Elementor compared to Gutenberg right now is kind of like a race car compared to a, almost like a pickup truck or something in a way. It's like two different functionalities for sure. Yeah, I was I was just on a on a Zoom meeting this morning, uh, 
and they had uh, they had five speakers there, and two of them were Gutenberg users. One of them was uh, Oxygen. One was Elementor, and one was Beaver Builder. And basically, they were just talking about you know the benefits of each platform and what they liked about it and things like that. There, so it was nice to hear about. It. Oh, I heard about that seminar. I couldn't go because I had a staff meeting that conflicted. Uh, did they talk about if Elementor is going to support the block editor at all? Or are they? do they know? Uh, they did not mention it in, in that meeting okay. this morning. Because I know Beaver Builder is making a big effort to be Gutenberg compatible. Yeah, well, you I know, know the, two guys, the two guys on there that, that were Gutenberg uh, experts. And uh, I mean, one of them worked, uh, two of them worked at Disney. And they they love Gutenberg. Yeah, Roy but, Steven. Yeah, yeah, but they they actually incorporate uh, Gutenberg with different page builders, and they said that they they've used all different types, and and so they really don't have a favorite page page builder, but they they yeah. do love the Gutenberg. Yeah, it's doable if you if you've got a good familiarity with HTML and CSS. I think it's quite doable to do a lot of that, but I know that's been a big issue for a lot of folks is that. Elementor has kind of like paved their own path and they don't seem to be wanting to actually embrace the WordPress space. I, I wonder if there's a real split going on that way. I think I mentioned before I use Brizzy, which I really like, uh, but they also have Brizzy Cloud and they're definitely trying to push people onto that. And yeah. I, I almost see a... Um, people wandering away from WordPress and using these page builders as the, the new platforms. That concerns me because yeah. the, the beauty of WordPress is the plugins. You can make the versatility of it. Well, not only that, but if you put all your eggs in one basket and that basket doesn't work exactly the way you need it to, yeah, you're, exactly. you're stuck. You're screwed. Yeah. And I, I've seen the same thing with Elementor is they haven't, they don't, they seem to be, you know, if they want a solution for a particular plugin like a WooCommerce and capability or Gravity Forms or something, actually, they don't even like want to work with Gravity Forms because they made their own form builder. And that's kind of the way they're pushing people is towards their form builder as opposed to trying to embrace the, um, the actual WordPress space. And I, that's the worry I have is that they're very much geared towards, I think they're going to fork. I think they're just going to yeah. fork and just go that direction. And, um, yeah. Go ahead. I, oh, uh, I listened to this uh, podcast, uh, WP Tonic. I don't know if anyone's yeah. ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're always talking about that, that basically everyone's seen kind of a right on the wall that Elementor will fork um, kind of system, yeah. which I think is, is good and bad. I mean, look at like Wix and things like that. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, I saw it from a plugin perspective, from a plugin owner perspective, is that uh, there's a fairly established plugin that we can't even get them to give us a copy of Elementor Pro. That's how much they don't want to integrate. I see. Jim, yeah. you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm just Mr. Chatty over here. I am Jim True. I am the uh, meetup lead for lead organizer for St. Pete, but I also work with Elaine over here to, oh, to my right and uh, well, I don't know, your Brady Bunch may be laid out differently and Travis and uh, my brain is completely dying. Jen Novak. Uh, the four of us are the co-organizers for Meetup St. Petersburg. You know, I, some you guys have both been to those meetups. So, you know, we meet twice a month. Uh, we've been doing it for the last five years, ever since, uh, pretty much ever since WordCamp, the last WordCamp Tampa Bay. Because uh, we have said that we needed to establish a more local presence. And that was our focus of the WordPress St. Petersburg meetups was to get more community involvement going. And that's kind of where I kind of took over that regional lead thing, role for uh, WordPress Tampa Bay. So I've been trying to get folks that are actually interested in running their own meetup groups and helping them get organized. So that's why I reached out to Daniel when he said, I'm kind of interested. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yep. And then COVID happened. Yeah, and then COVID happened, exactly. Yeah, I mean, well, for, that's the thing about it is that I just, I didn't realize that uh, Lee Webb is up that way too. Uh, there's a handful of people that are pretty familiar to me from our uh, St. Petersburg meetup. So I think yeah. it's possible for you to get some, you know, to definitely build a community back up there again. So, you know, this COVID thing is going to mess everybody up. I'm also, 
a support engineer at Gravity Forms. And on my free time, well, I was for the last four years, I have been the community support lead for Pods Framework. But I'm now community support lead as a volunteer role, but that's because I managed to make Pods Framework support only take an hour a day. So if that, yeah. Thanks for all your involvement, Jim. You're you're definitely a treasure to all of us. Yeah, we try. It's just so funny because it's like folks will dial into the grab or folks will open a ticket on Gravity Forms and I'll recognize the name, and they'll end up like hopping over on onto, onto the Pods framework. And it's like you know, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> We've had quite a few folks from our meetups even that have showed up on Gravity Forms support and uh, Pod support too. So uh, I've got a few tickets throughout the years on Gravity Forms there. Yeah. It's a great product. I gotta say that much for it. It is well established and ain't going anywhere. It probably um I, I I'm pretty sure it's the plugin I've been paying for the longest amount of time. I'm pretty sure for me it's too. Like, yeah. God. Um, yeah, even before I got hired there, I yeah, it was the one it was one of the few plugins that I paid for every year, no matter what. So do you, uh, the people who've been more involved in, do you see WordPress trying to develop? I mean, I, I think they definitely are with Gutenberg, they're, they're, their own page builder. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, Gutenberg is a page builder. That's kind of the me? whole point. But Gutenberg is a page builder of a sense. It's the blocks, the block concept is yeah. what people are looking for. But the only way they're going to make that fully supportable is to embrace CSS grid and start doing things in a much more standardized way, you know, standardize the grid format, maybe switch to Flexbox, mm -hmm. I don't know. Because the more they allow the infrastructure to build the stuff, the less control they'll have over it. But as Travis will probably say too, it's very obvious where the drive is coming from for Gutenberg. That's very obviously coming from WordPress.com. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, and it, so that kind of leads up here, where's WordPress.org going? Where's the open source? Or is it going to have to fork away? No, what I think is going to have to happen is, is that on a, from discussing this at a couple of different word camps and discussing it and hearing it discussed is it's probably going to have to go the way like PHP and many other ones go is where the movers and the shakers of the WordPress world, which is the, the companies that have built their platform on that on that yeah. environment are going to have to come together and establish a emissary and say, hey, we're on the board of WordPress.org and no, Mr. Matt Mullenweg, you no longer get to steer the boat. Not completely. It has to be a committee. And that's kind of how PHP and several of the other things have had to go because that's the way open source things work is that they have to be committed, committee driven. They cannot be driven by one moneymaker. Yeah. Even if he originally came up with the idea and ran with it, you know, it can't just be his. It's not his. There's way too many people that make their living on WordPress.org, and it can't just be treated that and way. And way, way too many people that put more time and effort into it than he does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's the, the other part of it, too, is like school systems, huge school systems are running on multi-site, and yet they haven't been given as much focus as multi-site needs to be given in order to make multi-site a much more enterprise level product. Yeah. You know, for proper enterprise level solutions and, and support. I thought all world, um, uh, WordPress.com was all written on, on multi-site. I have no idea what WordPress.com is written on. I wouldn't want to know. <laughs> WordPress VIP is written on some heavier stuff and the which thing is, is that, their enterprise play which is why they don't care about multi-site yeah exactly because they pay people to go on wordpress vip and that is where they're putting all of their true network structure support at they're not doing it for the standard wordpress.org open source although they could that's the thing about it so it's very interesting yeah. right, so you have a travis up there <laughs> <laughs> or did you already Travis already talk? You didn't Travis, talk yet, uh, I did not, no. Uh, I'm Travis. Uh, similar to Rob, I'm also in Hudson. Uh, I, for the past over five years now, I've been working at Rocket Genius, creators of Gravity Forms. I was previously uh, a developer over there on the product, on the Gravity Forms product and, and all the add-ons. 
but I'm now lead developer over on the web team where we oversee all of the web properties related to Gravity Forms. And alongside that, I also run For Gravity, where we offer a suite of premium uh, certified Gravity Forms add-ons. Oh yeah, that's a big thing, the certified add-on developer program yeah. with Gravity Forms. Yeah. So. Um, I was actually, I was listening to a podcast uh, of the creator of, what is that? Uh, I'm gonna guess Zach Katz, creator of Gravity View. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> 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 and he was talking about um, working with Gravity Forms. And it, it sounds pretty interesting, it seems pretty cool. <laughs> You know, we just rolled out recently a new uh, certified developers program where there's a collection, I think it's seven developers uh, <laughs> who are all certified, who go through like a, a mix of like support audits and security audits and all that stuff that Rocket Genius is certifying like these developers, their products are top tier quality. So. That's pretty nice. Elaine, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm so glad you're taking over this group. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm Elaine Simmons. Um, I have my own uh, practice, Elaine Simmons Design, and I have clients and I maintain their websites. Um, and uh, Jim and I go way back from when I first got involved with WordPress through um, Allison Foxall who started uh, WordPress uh, Tampa, Tampa Bay WordPress. And um, I knew nothing at that point about WordPress, but I knew something about building websites. But we, and right away, we, we did a few uh, WordCamps. So, you know, I jumped right in. Um, and then she kind of spun out and all of us organizers kind of spun out except me and Jim just stuck together here with St. Pete. That was the most yeah. active group. Yeah. We did, I think we burned up too fast. That's the problem. We tried to do too much with those three word camps back to back. And yeah, we were the first, our last word camp was the first one underneath the WordPress foundation change when they changed all of the sponsors and we couldn't get any sponsorships and it was really ugly. Because the year before we had so many sponsorships and we're able to throw lots of money at the whole event. Yeah. It's just, it's not a fun world. And the one, I don't know if you got it. You Did you deal with it much when you did the New York one? Um, where are you lost an entire three months of your life or more? <laughs> <laughs> it does take up a lot. Um, Miami actually took up more of my time than New York. I was also working in New York. Yeah. But, um, but I thought we were able, we were able to get sponsors and things like that. Maybe the policies changed or something? It's changed a bit. But they, you had a lot of local sponsors too. You didn't have yeah. just gold sponsors. Um, so that does change a little bit of things. Um, yeah, we had a lack of sponsorship. We were going to do two days. And then we, they were looking at the budget. We didn't have the money to do, to, to do two days. And we pushed to say, let's do one day. And I'd already sent all the notifications out to the speakers and got rid of some speakers and stuff like that. And then we switched back to two days again. Uh, Found money in the budget that was always there all along. So that's another and then thing. And so, some members were real gung-ho and said, let's live stream it. I mean, that was a nightmare. Three years they live streamed it. And every single time they live streamed it, they still never started and stopped the videos in each room for each session so that the files, the video files were gigantic and had to be sub-edited and oh, it was just, yeah. So you'll see, that's why we, I mean, deliberately, that's why we are, we stream directly to YouTube and I don't have to edit after the fact. <laughs> Cause editing is a pain in the ass. So. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. When, uh, when was the last <laughs> word came Tampa? That was 2015? Yeah. No. Was it 2015 or 16? No, 16. Because first one was 2014. 2015 was the first one at USF and 2016. I think was the, the one. first one was 2013, maybe. Nope. Nope. No? Nope. What time, what, what part of the year was it usually? 
it was that one was May. I mean, it's one all was this. one time we did it uh, September 11th. Yeah, that was the that last was 2015, I think. Right, yeah. that was 2015. Yeah, the uh, they're all on the website. It's in that little discussion on the first page. So oh. <laughs> I had to give I had to give the history and stuff, and without tearing anybody down, it just. But yeah, I mean, Allison doesn't even live in Florida anymore, and uh, yeah, we had to we I had to do a hostile takeover on the website. <laughs> That's how bad it was. <laughs> which I don't like doing, but it worked. It was a method. Well, you know me, I've got three word camps under my belt, so I'm itching to do another word camp. I figured as much, but did you, I mean, how, you had good, you had good involvement though. You had a lot of really good, yeah. you had good sponsors and you had good, uh, a lot of people doing the work. Yeah, uh, it was, I mean, both in both, you know, in, in work camp New York and work in Miami. I mean, you learn things, you see how people work together. And now, did you do New York City? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I was yeah. up. Yeah. Um, and I was the social media photography organizer doing both of those. Um, cool. And then Work Camp Miami was uh, social and doing some photography. So. Okay. What are the primary things that, at, at the WordCamp? Uh, I, I could imagine a, a lot of the plugin uh, developers would be there. I, I, is that the primary thing, or uh, it's, it's 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 changed. It's changed yeah. over time. Yeah, it has now, changed over time. Because Jim is saying now they do thirty minute uh, sessions. Very yeah, quick. I haven't seen any of like we did when we did ours in twenty sixteen. The last one we did forty five to yeah, 45 oh. to 50 minute sessions. And then we gave, we told our speakers at a yeah. block so that they could go to the genius bar, the happiness bar afterwards to answer questions. So that we gave them as much time as they needed to do the talks because what we found was that the odd lengths of the talks and short talks don't give anybody a chance to actually go over anything. Like I can't even go to talks when they're 15 minutes long. I think it's pointless. Yeah. I think uh, DC adopted that too, I believe. With the hour? Yeah. The, or no, yeah. with the, it'd be 45 minutes and then you go do the. Yeah. I mean, 45 minutes is fine, I think. I mean, uh, yeah. I just, I know that Miami loves their lightning talks and so does WordCamp uh, US. They love lightning rounds. Yeah, is, lightning talks and then um, some of them just even being shorter, just 30 minutes, you know, just yeah. in general. So, what, yeah. what kind of attendance do you, do you normally see at these at the at the live ones? We had, oh God, we had around two hundred fifty, three hundred, something like that. The first oh, year, yeah, yeah, the really? first year, and then four fifty the second year, and I think like three fifty the last year. So okay, that last one felt more like. But you said, Elaine, did you say fifty three hundred? No, it might have been. No, no, I didn't say that. No, no, no. no oh, five two hundred and fifty. Oh, okay. That 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 yeah. makes a lot more sense. I'm thinking, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, our because our venue, smaller. our venue only took, would allow that many. So. Yeah. Right. Okay. The second one, we jumped quite a bit more because we went to USF, and we had uh, three tracks going. So, but typically, what ends up happening is, is you've got a lot of uh, technical talks, some beginner talks, a lot of entrepreneurial talks. Um, you aren't really allowed to talk specifically about one plugin because WordCamp doesn't I mean WordPress doesn't like that. So you can yeah. make your talk generic you and talk then sneak in the you, examples. You right, right now we'll be talking foreign concepts. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> how, yeah. how to build a plugin or, you know, I've, I've seen yeah. those. Yeah, there's, uh, we had a lot of, in the developer world, we had a lot of developer talks at the WordCamp Tampa, uh, all three of them. So yes. we even had like an entire uh, developer workshop day on a Sunday. So for folks that were wanting to learn a lot more and get into uh, the PHP world, which now would be the React world. So, yeah. So yeah, there's, I mean, the whole idea is, is that it's meant to be for a very inexpensive price. It's meant to allow you to be completely as inundated as you want to be in the WordPress world as far as like SEO, uh, business practices, everything. And, you know, um, the goal or is- Or just straight up networking. Or just straight yeah. up networking. Yep. You don't go to any yep. talks at all. You just hang out in the- in the It's the, hall, the hallway talk is where you get a lot done. 
Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. And I find, you know, what I really liked about work camps um, is the the array of topics too. So it's, there's something for people who are just starting out. There's folks that are just working on content and they're not doing any design or development. Um, but there's also intricate things for design development business owners as well. Um, folks that you know, have their own agencies or just independent studios. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot different than mo most web design conferences I go to. Like usually yeah. web design conferences are very specific. <laughs> Just the price, you know, and tend to be very expensive too. That's the other yeah. thing about work camps is they're not, they're not intended to be expensive. They're intended to be reasonably priced so that they can hit the full gamut of people going to them. Uh, like work camp US was amazing. The first one I went to in Philadelphia was awesome. And like the, the swag floor was like, holy cow, I didn't even need to pack any clothes. I could have yeah. gone there with just a jacket and a shirt and a pants on and just bought like a buttload of shirts and jackets and stuff. So, yep. <laughs> yeah, or I was given shirts. That was the other thing about like, you get like so many shirts you can get them. The, then the WordCamp has their, or WordPress has their own uh, booth where they sell like, you know, WordPress swag. So yeah. fun stuff. But yeah, we did uh, kind of the same thing. I mean, you know, our sponsors typically give us, give away a lot of good stuff and, um, you know, they pay for like the after dinners, the parties and stuff like that. So, I mean, physical ones, I can see the attraction. Our biggest issue with Tampa Bay is the fact of lack of venue space because it's a huge jump from a small space, like a 200 to 300 to a 500, 600. You have to go all the way up to 1,000, 1,500 WordCamp US sized to be able to accommodate it in Tampa Bay because we have convention centers there's schools, schools will not donate. And that was the problem we ran into is University of Florida would not donate their space. But I think, honestly, if we try to go in through the business college side, we could probably get in that direction. Um, St. Pete campus, like, you know, if we have to like look beyond the COVID-19, so it's not anything like that's not gonna happen until 21 or 22, so. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately too, the thing is no matter, you know, however this plays out with coronavirus, the issue now is it's psychological, right? So, so much of the society now is already, you know, self-conscious yeah. about being out in public. So it's going to be an uphill battle. Um, Not in, I mean, how long did it take for the swan, I mean, the last world pandemic to dis, I mean, granted, we're much more technological than we were then, but we're also much more populated and smashed together than we were then too. So that's kind of how it's going to take years before this is, it's going to take a lot of cooperation from people in the area. I was very surprised. Like when I, like I said, I left there about seven weeks ago and I'd go down to Aldi's and 95% of the people were wearing masks. And yet some of the pictures that I've seen since then, nobody is. Yeah. Uh, Trader Joe's, they're all wearing masks. Yeah. They are now. No, they were all along. Trader Joe's from day one. Uh, customers might not have been, but they recommended it. Uh, but every single employee, and they started doing the social dis distancing all the way back in March. So, yeah, it's hard with photography too. I mean, some things you just don't know that people are taking, you know, yeah. the photographs that day or things or anything like that. Um, one of the things that we had done at Pinellas was uh, the sheriff wanted to show people that there were people that were social distancing on the beach but you couldn't see it in most of the photos. And so we did actual photos on the beach this way, you know, just landscape. And they also at the same time had a helicopter above taking photos. And you could see the shots that we're taking on the beach look like it's packed, but from above you see its family is separated out for the most part. Uh, it's just pretty interesting. I've definitely learned these photo tricks that people use that I never knew about before. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just going to be a very interesting world we're going to be in. And it's going to take a while. That's the whole thing about it. You know, it's not going to be, we're not going to be over this in a year. Let's just put it that simple. That's, I think that's why WordCamp Europe went ahead and went virtual for next year. Yeah, I saw that. They've already announced it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So for 2021, that'll be virtual. Yeah. Well, I mean, they see the impact. They see it over there now. That's, that's kind of the thing, you know, the, um, 
Europe did a lot more of the appropriate responses, except for some of the countries. But even those countries that were hit very hard, you know, once they realized what was happening, they did buckle down the, you know. <laughs> Italy was the example, sure. Yeah. I mean, Italy was like really bad at the beginning and they realized how bad, and Spain too, and they realized how bad it hit them. And so they deliberately did what needed to be done. But I mean, you know, they'll see it now if they, if they re open up the restrictions too early, what the response is going to be. And uh, it's just going to have to keep, it's going to have to be keeping, be keeping aware like that. Like New Zealand and Australia did it proper. And Taiwan. And Taiwan. Yeah. So. And Vietnam. Yeah, and Vietnam. Yeah. Of all places. Uh, most of the places that had female leaders did fine. <laughs> That's true. Yep. I don't know if Vietnam yeah. as, a, as a female person. I think, honestly, I think it's a mommy thing. It's like, you know, when it comes down to it, I, mean, I hate to put it that way, but it's true. You know, you care. There's an empathy factor there that has to be there, is that you can't have an economy without people. And if you don't think of your people first, and take care of your people first and your kids and all of them right at the beginning you got nothing you know it's it's easy enough to say the word let's freeze like i mean i just feel like for me i wish there was that samuel not samuel jackson but uh, my brain just completed this deep impact the movie where the asteroid hits the good one not the not the bad one <laughs> but the president of that movie he sat there and said there will be no he says we're freezing the economy we're freezing all wages. No one will lose their job. No one will lose, you know, there, no one's being evicted. Uh, there'll be no price gouging. It's just basically the whole, what should have happened? You make a statement at that at the top, top level, but nothing changes. And people, okay, all right. If I'm not gonna lose my job and <laughs> I'll stay here for a month, <laughs> you know, it's just, we didn't deal with this right. And then we got to. Well, all we can hope is better now. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so to go to a livelier topic. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, we got stuck in that one. Sorry about that. <laughs> Any, uh, so how about that Gutenberg? Uh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Always a lively topic. <laughs> I was going to say, any, any um, interesting plugins or themes or... Anything you've seen online that's WordPress related? Lately, I know. Like, I know. I like what Generate Press is doing. Um, the guy who runs the Generate Press plugin, he's created a Generate Blocks, which he's tried to kind of like encapsulate the whole idea of all of the multiple blocks into like four core blocks, which is container, grid, uh, headline, and uh, there's one other one. I can't think what it is now. But anyway, I think it's image, and he's kind of given like a really good handling for responsiveness all the way through very clean code, very lightweight code. Um, and it's, it's working pretty good. I'd have to say, and I can't wait to see what his pro version is going to be because he's coming out with the generate blocks pro version because he's got a generate press theme and then a generate press premium, which gives a lot more control and capabilities. Uh, out of all of the themes I've played with in the last, since I've been playing around, I love it. I've never had a theme that I've enjoyed this much that has that good of a support support system and a community behind it. We use it for uh, WordPress Tampa Bay. I use it on my personal site. I use it on uh, all the pod sites. And uh, but yeah, as far as like the his handling of the Gutenberg is really good, and he's and he takes he takes criticism really well, and tries to build it into this stuff pretty quickly. I haven't seen any other block uh, plugins that I like yet. A, a lot of them are tend to be going that whole uh, builder way where they're doing the same thing that um, uh, Elementor does where like there's yeah. ultimate add-ons add for Elementor, and ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder, and ultimate add-ons for Generate or for Gutenberg. And they're just, they're creating 4,000 million blocks and I just, I don't like that. I don't, I think it's um, cluttering. And it's always, you know, I fell into that trap. I started out with, uh, when I started doing page builders, uh, first I started out doing PHP and actual coding and I started out doing page builders after that. But I started with, what was it, Visual Composer at the time. 
Um, and we went through the same learning curves, right? Of a lot of plugins, yeah. it's just a lot bundled into a plugin to make things work. Um, and I found that clients liked being able to, you know, throw an accordion into a page and not have to worry about it. But at the end of the day, they didn't care how it went in there as long as they could manipulate it. Yeah. Just, you know, well, clients, I mean, when it comes down to it, they don't, they don't want to build websites. That's not their job. Yeah. They care about content. They care about, yeah. you know, and that's always been my focus whenever I've done a site is focus on the content first and focus on the content being consistent. And I mean, you do get those weird clients that are like, well, I want a green on this page and blue on this page. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is exactly like why when I would build out sites, it was just like, custom post types, meta boxes with CMB2. Yep. And then like within there, you can like you, if you need like color variations, there's a drop down for color variations that has the approved variations that match the design we built. Yeah. That way you can put in whatever content you need to, but it's always gonna appear correctly. Yeah. The, and um, I even started a new project today that that's exactly how I did it because it just keeps it simple. No nonsense. Been, and I'd have to like write a bunch of React and like set up like a compiler and everything to get it done. Yeah. No, that's stupid. Um, Unlike Gutenberg has the, you can create the color palette and lock it down. Mm -hmm. So for the block editor, so. Yeah, we can also limit, you know, the blocks that show up as well. Um, yeah. You can do it in, in Elementor, Beaver Builder or Gutenberg. But I always find that's really great to be able to just limit for the client what they need to work with so then they get, you know, doesn't get too cumbersome for them. Well, what do you guys do to, to and, I, and I agree with you, Trevor, keep it simple if you can, but the one thing that's never simple is is the dashboard that WordPress gives you. What do you, you do, clean it up? What are you using to clean it up and, and have, uh, you know, the first off, ads that keep coming in it and... <laughs> don't make them admins right off the bat. Do not give them admin access unless it's an emergency. Give them yeah. an emergency admin envelope that should I die or should, you know, whatever, you know, yeah. here's your admin access, but please don't log in with this account. Log in only with your editor access. You immediately remove most of the crap out of the way if you switch them to editor. And then you start cleaning up what the editor sees. And like with admin menu editor, uh, there's a couple of different plugins like that that will do. There's a, uh, God, what is that one? I haven't used it. I haven't worked with client sites in so long, so it's hard for me to remember what they are. But there's like a um, oh God, a whitelist, or is it white? What's the what's the term when you're? Um, I know Beaver Builder gives you that capability too. To oh, what white label? White label. That's it. Yeah, white label CMS. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's one, and it does a really good job too. Um, the one I've been using for a few years has been Admin Menu Editor Pro. Yeah. With the It'll allow That's you my go-to. Yeah, it'll allow you to override the, the side menu, but also they've expanded it much more now where you can actually um, override everything from the login screen to the top panel, uh, the widgets that are on the dashboard. Nice. Um, and so often what I'll do, I, I even do this in my day job as well as when I freelance call, is I'll actually make them like 30 second videos of how to do something. Um, so, you know, anything I'm creating where it's like a custom post type or whatever, I'm actually just giving them a quick video to show how what to is it. What is the name of that again, please? Uh, Admin Menu Editor Pro, I think. I can just pop the link in there. Okay. And I think, is that the link for Generate Press? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And there's the admin menu editor on the WordPress.org site, the free version. And here's the generate blocks is the one I was talking about for generate press. Um, as an option to check out, uh, there's a guy that's done several um, tutorial videos for generate blocks. Uh, his name is Mike Oliver. And, and just to provide a different perspective, instead of like doing an, an editor user and, and locking everything down and stuff like that, if you find yourself logging into the dashboard and you're like getting bombarded with alerts and everything, stop using those plugins that are creating those alerts and find alternatives. Yeah, yeah, that's true.
Now, granted, there's um, there's some that put alerts there. Like Gravity Forms puts like alerts on every page when like you have yeah. logging enabled because logging can be insecure. It's something you should only use temporarily. Like of course, like be aware of what each alert is and, and whether it's valuable. But ones that are just constantly bombarding you with ads, move along to, yeah. to something else. Yeah, I've had to stop using Yoast for that exact reason. I've had to stop using a couple of plugins because of that. Are you using Rank Math instead? I haven't switch, switched yet. I haven't figured out what I want to use yet. I'm still looking. Okay. Has anybody had any experience with Rank Math? I, I've, I've, I've got it on a couple of the sites. It seems to be OK. Um, but it, it's certainly not as heavy as, as Yoast is. I mean, Yoast is just a bear. It's yeah. a bear. Yeah. 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 I haven't done it math. yet, just because the the migration isn't wasn't completely perfect. There's stuff I have to mainly go back and do, so I just haven't had the time to do it yet. But I plan on moving to the SEO framework. It's a very lightweight SEO plugin that will handle like a lot of the similar stuff, but just they keep it pared down to the basics. Yeah. Oh, I've seen that one. I've actually heard yeah. good stuff about that one. Yeah, it's this one. I think my biggest issue with Yoast is the fact that he upgrades every week, updates every week. And so it just gets, it's so annoying. And to the point where it has broken the site several times to the point where I'm having to always do my updates with that one in staging. Um, Which if they were a Yoast plugin. Site? Yeah, Yoast has. Yeah, because they've got a select two uh, or something. They've got some kind of a jQuery in one of their uh, portions that is causing havoc with some of the other stuff that I also use. So. Yeah, I mean, so I, I would argue the issue isn't necessarily with them updating so often, but that because they're a uh, plugin in the .org repository, all plugins become auto updates. It's not like with some premium plugins where like with gravity forms, we control, we, we push out a lot of updates, but we control which ones push out to the, the WordPress dashboard. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, even Event Calendar does it. What? Uh, well, they stage theirs. They're like, their major releases are quarterly. Their uh, maintenance releases are like monthly, unless there's a, a security release. And then if they do a security release, you know, obviously it, it's, it has higher priority. So. But in theory, the mm -hmm. more frequent you release the updates, the less major things happening in the updates, the less chance of something breaking. <laughs> in theory. <laughs> in theory. The caveat. Yeah. I have yet to figure out what Yoast is updating every week. But it just got to the point where I just couldn't deal with it anymore. So it was like every single time I logged in, I had to update Yoast. And it was like, this is ridiculous. It is always once a month. You're right. Yeah. No, it's more than that. <laughs> It's a lot, and that's the thing about it. When you've got a lot of sites, and you're constantly managing stuff, and yeah, it starts getting on you. <laughs> so, but hey, if you do updates to your plugin frequently, it's easy to sneak in like Black Friday sales code, because no one will be paying attention. Yeah. For what those, was that? <laughs> for those who didn't know, that was the controversy with Yoast. This past yeah. Thing. Oh, okay. well, the most recent controversy with the host. There's been so many. <laughs> um, I just started playing around with, I'm not usually one to, to use page builders, but I actually just started getting into messing around with Beaver Builder and Elementor more. Um, just thinking about, you know, how that can be used kind of on an enterprise level. So I'm going to check out that seminar you guys were talking about from earlier today. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but, it had a good representation. From what I saw from the list, so I'm, I'm glad it was a good, it was valuable, Rob. So. Yeah, that was really good. What was it called? Uh, I'll have to look up. Let me see if I can find the email here. Yeah, if you could share the link, that'd be cool. Yeah. I didn't see that. Um, what I was going to say was I've been tinkering with this thing called a page builder framework, which is just a it's a starter theme um, or a theme framework per se. But uh, they're trying to use some of those newer methods, right? Of like CSS grid, of CSS variables. So it's kind of like meshing the development world with the page builder world. So just picking it apart a little bit, I've been doing for the past week has been pretty interesting because it's uh, 
as a developer, I really like it because I can customize a lot, lock down a lot real quick. But also from a framework perspective, if you go to their customizer in there, um, you don't even need things like Elementor Pro or whatever to, to have kind of the advanced capabilities of putting a pattern footer and stuff like that. And so it's pretty interesting. Which it's interesting that they decided to go with the customizer because that thing yeah. could be uh, yeah. on its way out the door. Huh? Is it going out the door? Really? It's, been it's definitely not going to get any future development or future attention okay. given to it because everything's going to be Gutenberg. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Put some place for that stuff. There's no, there's no <laughs> front end um, editing yet for Gutenberg, right? Not that I've seen. It's and on the way. That's what I'm saying. I'm guessing that you know some mix of the customizer and Gutenberg is going to end up being what they do. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they still got to have overall site settings. You can't do everything on a block. So, yeah, because like menus and headers and footers are not on a page by page basis. And if they switch to that, they're fucking crazy. <laughs> Sorry, but that's just like, whoa. It's like, sometimes you have to think site level, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like even just custom post types and stuff. You have to sometimes <laughs> manage the content higher than the page level, so. Uh, my journey with page builders. Did anyone ever use page lines? Did you ever hear that? No. I have yeah. used uh, WP, uh, the Visual Composer. I won't touch it because it's WP Bakery underneath. Yeah. And uh, yeah, their code is really bad. Yeah. So. I've been firmly in the no page builder camp. Yeah. yeah. I for a while. Um, Does front page count? <laughs> no. I said I long. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I use Dreamweaver too, so yeah. I mean, I know. Believe and, and, and that's re that that's reaching way back, but um, I've used WDP uh, Baker and didn't like it at all. Went away from it for a long time, and yeah. I kind of like Brizzy. It, it's I, if, you, if you haven't looked at it, take a look at it, see what you think. How do you spell it? A B R I Z Y. It's listed on your WP Page Builder Framework dot com. It's they list the Elementor, Beaver Builder, Brizzy, Divi, Visual Composer, and I have no idea what that last one is because it doesn't have a name beside it. And it, none of these are linkable, which is right off the bat, I have a little concern. <laughs> Where'd you find that? Uh, On the WP Page Builder framework, if you keep paging down, integrates with the page builder you love. And I'm going, okay, so you're building a page builder framework that integrates with your favorite page builder. I'm very confused. <laughs> it's kind of how I feel about the, uh, like. Uh, it's a theme, really. It's, it's a theme. Yeah. That's what I mean is like, okay, make up your mind. What are you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Divi had that same problem because Divi said they were a theme and then they're a builder with their theme. Right. Make up your mind. Oh, I, I posted, I posted that link for that. Uh, it was a uh, WP roadmaps is her is her uh, website, yeah. and I believe she said she was going to post the uh, replay on her website there. Awesome, thank you. All right, everybody, it's been it's been fun. I got got some stuff to get to, some plug-in deployments. Yeah, to, yeah, someone has some deployments about. tonight. <laughs> and Don't break everything, time. Travis. Yeah, well, I tried doing a, a deployment yesterday. And we ran into an issue where it's like, okay, we'll just roll it back. And uh, Deploy HQ did not roll it back properly. So Gravity Forms licensing downloads account stuff was down for a full hour. For a full hour? Was it a full, full hour? hour? Yes. Okay, I thought it was only like 30 minutes. It felt like Cause, longer, but. Because <laughs> I did not have uh, direct uh, access to the server to be able to manually just go and replace the files. Is that fixed now? Which part? Have you been given God? Have you been given God access now? Yes, uh, my Good. access was pre. I had it, but then it was previous. It was removed because just uh, on a under a focus of GDPR stuff, limiting employees who had access to customer data. That makes sense. But now, as I am a part of the Web Properties Group again. Yeah, well, it's kind of like the whole thing with like, you know, if you don't want me bugging you every five minutes about account stuff. You're going to have to give some of us in the, in the content, in the front line, access to Chargeify, whether you want it or not, you know. 
So. With that. Bye. Take care, guys. Take care Trevor. Bye, Travis. <laughs> well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Thank you for running this. Um, have you, uh, are you going to put a poll out, you think, to find out what kind of days of, of the week and uh, weeks of the month that people want to meet? Yeah, I think that'd be good. I also want to be cognizant of like when St. Pete's meeting or any other meetups. We yeah, have. we have claimed the first and third. So if you do every Tuesday, I'm going to get really annoyed because <laughs> <laughs> I will never have my Tuesdays back. And I like having some Tuesdays off. Yeah, it's the second Tuesday of the month, I think. So works okay but we could uh, yeah. shift if we need to yeah uh tampa's got well they were the first thursday. wednesday the first, first wednesday. wednesday is what they are on yeah they were thursday and then that wasn't working out so well so they switched to wednesday and brandon uh is second monday of the month and brandon uh hasn't had a meetup in a while and i saw somebody reaching out and asking where are we meeting at now alfonso <laughs> Daniel, how many people were used to be part of the new Port Ritchie group in the past? We have a hundred something on there. Yeah, there's there's how easily a hundred and there's a hundred and forty six members, I think. But yeah, but how many actually took part? Uh, I, he never was no he wasn't back here when they were running their regular meetups. Okay. But I think I want to say they had at least ten to fifteen. That a would lot come of them. Out. Yeah, that would come out. But I mean, they did them at the coffee shops and stuff like that, independent, you know. When they were I, I'm regular. Really surprised we're not getting more people out to these Zoom type meetings because it's easy people to do. Are, people are burned out, is what yeah. it comes down to. Yeah, I mean, so. I've, I've noticed that that's why I canceled uh, or why we canceled August and September, or July and August talks because people are, it's just, you can tell it. People are, we're burnt out. You know, we're like, we're all exhausted, we're all anxious. And we're all, right now, yeah. yeah, it's just one of those kind of things. I think the ask us any things are just enough for right now, you know, because I, you know, people have a problem, ask us. Yeah. And we try to make sure that the Facebook group is as open as possible so that if somebody has a problem, they can ask on there as well. I just noticed that a lot of people don't. So. But yeah, you got to do what you got to do. And I'm not going to talk as much next time. I'm going <laughs> to. No, no, no. This was great. If uh, anyone has any ideas too for future topics or whatever, or things like that, let me know. Definitely looking for folks to organize with me as well. And help figure out, you know, in person things once we get there again. Yeah. That'll be fun. Give me some <laughs> theme reviews. Uh, I know Jim likes Generate Press. I like hey. Astro. And I've. Yeah played with Cadence lately and I really like it. Oh, Cadence Blocks and the Cadence theme? Yeah. Yeah, it did not block just Cadence W, just the theme. Okay. Uh, w, and, and I really like their setup. Yeah, we can go over all, any kind of stuff like that. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Right. Yeah, hosting. thank you for hosting, Daniel. Take care. Yep. See you next right. month. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>